Saberites, Anonymous here. I'm coming to you here from uh, the uh, the headquarters here, or my, my little uh, cave, as it were. Um, as you know, we've had a, a little bit of a fire in the training hall, so uh, that's uh, kind of out of commission. So I decided to uh, do a couple of videos here. Um, we'll start shooting from here and uh, hopefully get to the demonstrations and stuff um, kind of later. Um, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to bring up um, a very interesting question which comes up a whole lot um, and is of great importance to people who are out there studying alone. And that's uh, what do you do if you don't have a tr practice space uh, or a training partner? Um, how can you practice by yourself if you can't get out to some place where you can um, get with other people or get some instruction or something? Um, <clears throat> And uh, so I thought I'd go over that. Uh, as you see here, um, the room fits pretty much, let me see, it's pretty much into the frame. This back wall right here is, uh, as you see, solid there. And solid there. So it's not a very big space. Now I do have high ceilings in here, so that is something that um, I am lucky to have. Um, but uh, that's just going to be, we can take care of that in, in, in another way. So, what I would suggest doing, especially in a small space like this, and this is kind of what I do nowadays, I don't necessarily do it here. Um, I have other places that I can go outside in my, my living room, everything like this, but I, I generally can practice something in any space that I find. Um, and one of the best things that I have found to do, first of all, especially if you're not used to moving in a confined space, is to go through some of the stuff that you know, nice and slow, within that space. Try to use it, but don't hit anything. And obviously, as you are moving through this, move slowly and deliberately to work on your technique as far as keeping the blade close to you, your accuracy with your weapon, and your use of what limited space you have. And obviously for, for lots of reasons in martial arts, um, if you're doing stuff for self-defense and any type of combative art will, will give you some sort of self-defense. Um, being in limited spaces and confined spaces is part of what you will be finding. Now, a um, couple of tips. Uh, as you see here, I don't have a whole lot of room to move around. I can walk around about like this. I have a stool here, a couple of chairs, and all that. So I do have obstacles. That's why you don't see me moving around too much. But even within this, if I can get into a Dubek rider stance, say, <clears throat> like this, and like this, right? That will give me enough room for a single step in each direction, okay? Because I'll have that one kind of long stride or I can go into a front stance on either side um, within that, that space. So, <clears throat> and then you just kind of utilize that space a lot. Um, now, I'm using here my Darth Alice Katana Saber. Okay? This is rather long for some people. Um, it's about average for me. It does have a long handle, so it's lots of two-handed stuff, and it's it's it's, it's hefty-ish. Um, so if you have a lower ceiling or even a smaller space than, I'm, than I have, um, you might want to switch out your blade. Um, and even though that does change the balance and stuff, here I have a solo, Solo's Hold Padawan with a 24-inch blade in it. Um, and... From that point, I can work on a lot of my spins, 
-hmm. my wields. I can't work on guards and parries, right? And do a lot more blade work with the smaller blade because I don't have to worry necessarily so much about hitting things. I can go through here. Now, like I said, it does change the balance a little bit, but you are working in a confined area, so you're working with the best what you got. Um, <clears throat> so I don't, I don't really see too much of a problem with it. Um, you can use these weapons then, of course, in open space too, so that's absolutely um, valid as well. And this kind of thing will help you with close quarter combat, um, coming into the bind, getting into the bind and, and winding around the other person, that kind of thing. Um, having a short blade in this is more like a saber or a cutlass. Um, show you here. They are about the same length. This can be used two-handed and this one will have a longer blade on it, but um, still works pretty well. Um, so yeah, so that's another, another solution. If you're looking to get uh, some of the wielding exactness down, where I'm doing my orbits and I'm trying to keep track of where the saber is. And we always say, you try to keep your saber as, as you're going here as close to you as possible. So as you're moving around and doing these things, you keep it to your body and you keep it from hitting the environment around you. And that can be very challenging. So these are things that you can do by yourself. Um, if you're looking for more things that will be more directly combative, um, you can, of course, shadow box. Now, by shadow boxing, you kind of need something like a Pell, and um, I'll, we'll go into some Pell work um, at, you know, at a later date, but um, <clears throat> if you're inside, you can set up chairs, you can set up pillows and all this other stuff as targets, and basically if I use this as a target, keep working on that even within this kind of limited space, even if I kind of come out over to here, so that I work on crossing that distance as quickly as possible. These are all things that I can do within a very, very short space, within a very small space, um, as long as I have a, long, uh, a short blade on it. Now that's not to say that you can't use longer blades, um, it just becomes a little bit more challenging. Um, as an example, since we have, I have three different sizes of blade here in the Padawans, and you can see the first one I was using oops, is the 24 inch here, right, and so that's very good, very easy to move around. I don't have to worry too much. I can worry more about what my body's doing and, and my technique. If I move up here to about a 32 inch, right, now, now I'm dealing with a little bit more realistic weapon, right? I can still spin it. I'm, I don't do it with as much abandon, right, and I have to kind of move around a little bit more there and also notice that I have to move my point of rotation also more into the blade when I'm going here so that it will turn and not create too big a radius um, that also is a good skill and you can see that most when you get into full length 30, 36 inch blades and you do the same thing and you notice that I'm now more limited because of the length of this blade. Now again if you have a low ceiling the longer blade is going to be 
much more restrictive because you're not going to be able to go up kind of over your head. So that's something to keep in mind, right? But as far as obstacles go, right, all of this stuff is with, totally within reach of me and I'm, I'm able to kind of keep it, keep it steady. So, <clears throat> okay. So there's a uh, couple of first couple of little ideas for training by yourself. You don't have a practice space, you don't have a practice partner. These types of things um, uh, work well. Now I did mention shadow boxing. Shadow boxing, um, you can, uh, besides setting up a target, you can go in literally to your shadow. You can look at your reflection, all of that. And that probably warrants its own, its, its own video and its own topic. So we'll go into that at, um, in another video. Uh, but these things also benefit you. and These things are also things that you can work on by yourself when it's raining outside, you're in a tiny little space. Be slow. Be methodical. Be very, very careful. Work on your exactness. Work on your, your precision. Um, and uh, then when you get into a more free you can kind of let loose, and that precision hopefully will have had an effect on your non-precision stuff. All right. Okay, so uh, like I said, uh, we'll be coming to you from various places um, until the training hall is finished. Um, we are still do doing classes, so uh, keep looking on the Facebook page for the events. Uh, come on down to Liberty Athletic Club in Ann Arbor, Michigan, if you are in the area. Um, like us on Facebook. Uh, join us on, in our Learners in Exile forum, and uh, obviously, obviously follow us on YouTube, Google+, Twitter, all of that great stuff. Until next time, have a great day. Happy Sabering.